Oh, what the? Oh, that's a fish. Oh, that's a fish, baby. Oh yeah, we're, we're definitely on collision course with that boat. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Northwest Fishing Secrets. We're heading out, uh, heading out to a little reef uh, together and we're gonna try and catch some perch, cabazon, kelp greenling, anything that we can catch there. So let's go ahead and punch it, baby. <laughs> it's a beautiful day out here today. Um, I've seen lots of sea lions out there. A lot of people fishing for salmon right now in uh, Elliott Bay. Yeah, for anyone not local, if you're wondering where I am, I'm right outside the city of Seattle. But we're gonna get away from the city and get to where the fish are. <laughs> What I'm looking for is a reef where there's just some structure. Most of the areas in the Puget Sound here are super flat. It's just a sandy bottom, which has really good fishing for uh, flounder and sand daps and stuff like that. Oh, man, I'd like to see if we can get some bait fish. So maybe we'll drop the sabiki um, for a second and just see what happens with that. Be cool if we could get some herring. I know there's been a lot of herring uh, schools out here lately. I just haven't been able to catch any lately. Every time I drop for herring, I've been like catching a bunch of juvenile salmon, which is not what we want. So if we start catching little baby salmon, we're not gonna not gonna fish the sabiki. I don't wanna hurt a bunch of uh, baby salmon. So here's what a sabiki rig looks like, guys. You can see there's a bunch of little little hooks on there. They're simulating like little shrimp, this one. Um, and then I've just got a weight down the bottom. Man, but look at the day out here, guys. This is just, I mean, come on. It doesn't get a whole lot better than this. So with these sabikis, just just move them just a little bit. All you want is that line to just, just move the shrimp a little bit. Remember, a shrimp's not gonna jump through the water like this. A shrimp's gonna go do something like this more. So that's all you gotta do. All right, so what I just tied up here is called a high low rig. Uh, as you can see, there's two hooks on this rig here. So it's the high and the low hook that we can throw some bait on. I've got some squid with me. And uh, then at the bottom, you've got your weight there. So here's just some frozen squid uh, that I caught probably a couple years ago. Stuff's delicious to eat, but man, it makes good bait too. So for perch, we just need really small pieces. We got the high-low rig on the rod now. And all we're gonna do is throw it on the hook a couple times. And we're good to go. <laughs> When the Canadian border opens back up again, like I would love to go up behind Vancouver Island and go all the way up to Alaska. Like Northwestern fjord fishing for rockfish, lingcod, halibut. Uh, but like, I, I don't know if you wanna see it or if we just need to like go up to the mountains more and stuff. I like both. <laughs> I'm totally impartial. So um, just drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys wanna see. All right, we just repositioned. I think we're on the spot now. All right, we're just gonna drop this. Come on, baby. Oh, oh. Oh, I felt him down there, I felt him. Oh, what the? Oh, it came off. Oh, <laughs> that was huge. That, that was probably something bigger. That was not a, uh, not what we're targeting. Dang, that was a big fish, guys. <laughs> now the bait might be gone. We did kind of drift over the spot. Check our rod. I, I don't think we have bait on there anymore. Oh no, there's still one piece on there. Dang. Man, I kind of want to find out what that big one was. So we're just gonna, could have been a big cabazon is what I'm hoping really what I'm hoping. I'm gonna try a brand new setup here today. Oh, no, no clicker. Oh, that's a fish. Oh, we got slammed, guys. Right as I was letting out line, dang. Missed him. Oh, that's a fish. Oh, that's a fish, baby. Oh, oh, Jesus, a giant. <laughs> oh, we weren't even deep at all. I thought we were way deeper, but we, this was at the surface. Dang, look at that. It's a giant black rockfish. <laughs> now, uh, rockfish are protected in the Puget Sound. 
So uh, we don't really want to catch these guys. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead, take a quick picture with them, and release them again. Yeah, usually I try to lip them, but the first time you try and lip them, they'll always jump. Oh, man. Take a look at that. Took that uh, shrimp fly. That's why we throw a shrimp fly on there to double your chances of catching something. But damn, look at that. That's a that's a trophy there, guys. That's a trophy rockfish. But little guy, you're protected. We're gonna send him right back. <laughs> Splashed me there, damn. Ah, oh, beautiful fish. So the goal here is to get down to the reef uh, as fast as possible to avoid the rockfish and get down to where the cab is on and the kelp greenling are. There we go, we just hooked up something. I changed spots. Ah. Hit us hard, but gave up. Oh, geez. Dang, another giant rockfish. I'm gonna release you unharmed, don't you worry. There we go. All right, but as beautiful and tasty as this rockfish looks, we're gonna let him go. And he's off. Man, oh God, there's so many rockfish here. Arr! Man, what do we do, guys? What do we do? We gotta catch some food. Guys, I have a giant sand dab on here. I wasn't recording, sorry, but this is a huge fish. This is, oh, unbelievable. That's a, a rock sole. All right, let's boat flip him. Oh man, that's a good size. That's a, that's a really darn good size. Look at that fish. Holy cow! Well, maybe, I mean, if we don't catch any perch, we could always, like, catch a few more of these big logs and cook that up. That's that, that's like a small howl, but damn! <laughs> so that's, I mean, geez, that's, like, I gotta double-check the state record. This is really close to a state record, maybe. Holy cow, holy cow, there's big fish here. Big fish here. I did not expect giant uh, flounder and rock sole to be here. I gotta mark my location. So I've just got the perch rig down there, the high-low rig. And uh, what you just do is drop it to the bottom, find a sandy bottom for flounder. Just drop it down and let it drag across the bottom and just wait for them to slam into it. And then just immediately set the hook. And if you don't hook up right there, just drop it right back down again and they'll be right back. They're not shy fish. Oh, there, there, there we go, there we go. Oh. Might have been a small one. So see, we just brought it right back. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, we lost him, lost him. Right back down, right back down. They'll come right back. There's probably five of them looking at it. Oh! That's a good one. That's a really good one. Oh, what the heck is that? Oh, that's a, uh, whoa. What the? <laughs> a little, uh, that's a buffalo sculpin. Uh, you can eat these guys. I've eaten them before. It's all right, nothing crazy. This guy's a little bit small. Actually, for a sculpin, he's a decent size, but we're not gonna eat him. See those little horns that come out there? I don't. I probably wouldn't get want to get pricked by them. They might be venomous. Not 100% sure. Either way, we'll, we're gonna let this little guy go. Bye, buddy. I'm not gonna kiss you, you're a little ugly. <laughs> and he's off. There we go. There we go, that's a fish. Oh, well, oh man. Oh man, that's a, yeah, definitely a big flounder. Jeez, look at that, unbelievable. Unbelievable, let's not lose him. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a monster. That, that, jeez, these are the biggest darn uh, rock sole that I've ever caught. Wow, we're gonna eat so good. Those fish are so tasty. Yeah, if you ever run into a big school of these giant flounder, you're gonna wanna catch them, because they're delicious. I'm not kidding you. I know they look funny and ugly, but man, they're good. Like little halibut. We might, 
Might have something. Maybe something really small. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's a little salmon that came after this. What the heck is this? What the heck is that little thing? Some little, oh, it's a tiny buffalo sculpin. We're just gonna like let him go. I don't even wanna touch him. He has like little pricklers all over him. That's crazy. It's only like afternoon in midsummer, but the sun, it looks like a sunset because the sun's like behind some weird clouds. Oh, good fish. Oh, it's a giant, giant flounder. Holy cow. All right, come on, come on, in the boat. <laughs> He's a giant. Okay, well, it looks like we're gonna make uh, flounder fish and chips after all. And that's, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that. That's, I wasn't thinking that that's what we were going for today, but you know what, sometimes you gotta, uh oh, sometimes you gotta let the, the sea tell you what you're going for. Are right, we gonna do one more drop and then we gotta move? Kind of like drifting towards a boat right there that I don't wanna hit. I think we just skim it. Just hit just the tip. Oh yeah, we're, we're definitely on collision course with that boat. <laughs> so this here is a giant rock sole. This is, and this is good meat. They've got lots of meat on top, lots on the bottom, super easy to clean up, beautiful, just, just it doesn't taste fishy or anything i know they look all funny uh, these guys actually start as a young fish swimming like any other fish with eyes on each side and then as they get older one eye migrates over to the other eye and uh, then they become a flat fish like that and then live on the bottom and have both eyes on one side of their head it's the weirdest thing ever All right, so usually we end our videos cooking the fish outdoors, but it got late yesterday, so we're cooking in my kitchen today. Welcome to my kitchen. If you're kind of newer to the channel, you have not seen this place here yet. So I've got my trophy-sized flounder that I thought was a state record, but it's, it's, it's not. It's actually quite a bit smaller than the state record, which is hard to believe because it's probably the biggest rock sole that I've ever caught. But either way, we're gonna cut this baby up now. So all I've done so far in this fish is make one incision like this and then just start filleting the fish uh, from this side, just like any other fish. Another way that you can fillet these guys is making a center cut down to the spine and then filleting away like this and like that and getting one, two, three, four fillets total, but I want it in two fillets. So I just stick the knife right here, slide it over all of his bones. And there's some meat on these bad boys, jeez. So you're gonna just make your cut right here. And then I take my knife, come in here, make sure I lay it down on his bones. Now for this recipe, we're gonna need a couple potatoes, russet potatoes, because we're making fish and chips, baby. I have a deep fryer like five feet behind me in the garage, but we're, we're not gonna use a deep fryer. We're just gonna make them in the oven. Add a little bit of, need a bit of olive oil. That was probably more than I needed. Lots of black pepper. Come on. So we're keeping this super, super simple. All we've got in there is the black pepper. Of course, a little bit of Danish sea salt. Oh yeah, there we go. You could use uh, all sorts of things. You could throw in taco seasoning. You could throw in a little bit of uh, some breadcrumbs from there. You can do whatever you want. Remember guys, don't stick to recipes. Like recipes are guidelines. They're not rules. Don't go by the book all the time, you know? All we're gonna do is toss these babies.
for the breading, we're gonna, again, keep it super simple. It's just some all-purpose flour. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that in here. I just wanna show you guys how simple it is to make really delicious fish and chips. And in this bowl here, we're just gonna just crack in an egg. Come on, there we go. It's a feisty egg. <laughs> All we're gonna do with this egg, don't even need a fork. You just whip it up with your finger. It's gonna get dirty anyways. There you go, it doesn't need to be perfect. Just grab your flounder, dunk it in the flour first. Then bring it over here to the egg. And then just give that flour one more visit here. Now this guy, that's ready for the pan. All right, here we go. Now, of course, we're gonna need some tartar sauce and we're gonna use the beaver because you know you like the beaver. So this is what's going in. This is a portion that's like the size of my head. That's just the way I like it. <laughs> the only things that we're just gonna do is like, I like a lot of pepper on my food. Of course, just a little bit, of, a little bit of extra Danish sea salt. Oof. Let's go ahead and just, man, let's dig into this baby here. Gonna do just a little, I like just a little tiny squirt of uh, some ketchup for the fries. Okay, little fry test here. Mm. Uh oh. Doggies are in the yard that their friends came out. Do you want a little treat? Come here. Come here. Oh, here you get a French fry. And a little stinker. There we go. <laughs> now that they've had more than I have officially, squirt just a little bit of that on that fish. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Here we go. All right, all right. Let's get real now, guys. Dip it in that tartar sauce. Mmm. <laughs> oh man. Damn guys, that's this is legit. This is mm. so crunchy. Mmm. No. Yeah. So it just feels good to be eating sustainable seafood. I don't know if it's because I'm German, but I love potatoes. I eat potatoes all day long. If you've ever wondered where the term meat and potatoes comes from, this is it right here. <laughs> All right, guys, remember, if you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up, drop a comment below, subscribe if you're brand new, and we'll see all of you guys next week for the next fishing adventure. Till then, you all know it. Fish on, baby. <laughs>